wonder working God, we need a word from you today. We need a word that heals. We need a word that saves. We need a word that restores. We need a word. So let Rachel decrease so that you can increase. Open our hearts and our minds and our souls to receive the word of life, the word of hope, the word of peace that we so desperately need. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, on this second Sunday of Advent, where we normally look at the birth narratives of Jesus, I want y'all to do me a solid and look at a slightly different scripture. If you would open up your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter four, instead of looking at a passage of scripture about Jesus being an unborn baby or an infant or a newborn, I'd like to look at a passage of scripture in chapter four, where a grown Jesus meets a grown woman and gives her some hope and some peace. So if you could open up your Bibles, the Gospel of John, chapter four. Verse four, um, I'm going to read verses four through nine, and then I'm gonna skip around in that fourth chapter, all right? John chapter four, beginning at verse four. Listen for the word of God. Jesus had to go through Samaria. He came to a town in Samaria called Sithkar. It was near the piece of land Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus was tired from his journey, so he sat down by the well. It was about noon. A woman from Samaria came to get some water. Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew. I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? She said this because Jews don't have anything to do with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, you do not know what God's gift is and you do not know who is asking you for a drink. If you did, you would have asked him. He would have given you living water. Now, church, if I were con to continue through that chapter, we'd see this exchange between Jesus and this woman that, that I find interesting because of the way the passage of scripture starts. Um, every time I look at this scripture, it, it just boggles my mind that Jesus had to come through Samaria. So if you're looking for a topic, for the sermon today, the topic is simply this. God must come through so hope and peace can too. Because frankly, there are some things about this story that just don't make sense. Has anybody in the building, anybody in cyberspace ever had well water? Nobody in their right mind is going to draw water from a well at noon. Why would you draw well from water from a well at the hottest part of the day? Do you know what happens to well water? It takes on the characteristics of whatever you put it in. And in this day and time, the way that people carried water was in a jug on their head. Seriously, do you know what happens at noon? It's hot. Do you know what happens to a jug that you carry on your head at noon? It gets hot. And if it's not metal, if it's made out of pottery, it might start to take on some characteristics that you might not want to be attached to your water. 
I'm just saying. A hot jug that's been out in the sun is going to smell a little funny. And if it was actually male, it's sure enough going to smell a little funny. And you really going to go to a well at the hottest part of the day and carry the jug on your head at the hottest part of the day to get water. The only reason why somebody would do that is because they were trying to preserve their peace. Now, for some of y'all who don't know what I'm talking about, have y'all ever had the experience where you just going about your business and while you going about your business, folk want to disturb your peace? They want to shower you with negativity. They, 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 they want to tell you all about yourself as if you don't even know yourself. I, I am convinced that the reason why this woman decides to come to Jacob's well which is a sacred place for Samaritans at the time, to Jacob's well to draw water at the hottest part of the day is because she wanted to preserve her peace. I don't know about y'all. I imagine that this woman from Samaria, whose name we still don't know, by the way, um, was, was, was a woman who believed in God, was a woman who believed that there had to be better, something better available for her than what she was currently going through. I believe this is true because when she actually gets a chance to engage with Jesus, she has a solid theological conversation with him. When she gets a chance to engage with somebody who instead of stealing her peace, grants her peace, she begins to discover that what she's been looking for, the hope she's been looking for, the peace she's been looking for, the acceptance she's been looking for, is found when God comes through. Because Jesus decides that the best way for him to get from where he's going to Jerusalem is to go through Samaria. Nobody gets to Jerusalem from where Jesus was by going through Samaria. They, they avoid Samaria. Because if you're Jewish, you don't want to have nothing to do with them people. You know, them people, them folk who say they believe in God, but so mix all of their beliefs in God with all these <laughs> other stuff that you can't tell the difference between them and folk who don't believe in God. Them people. Um, those folk who believe in God so differently than how you believe in God that you've decided that they don't actually believe in God, but you didn't even ask God if it was true. Um, those people. You, you know, the, the folk whose church you don't go to visit because how they church is so different from the way you church. It don't feel like church. I'm, I'm just saying... Jesus went through Samaria. And because Jesus went through Samaria, Jesus was able to break through some lies that the woman who only came to the well at noon was living with that messed with her heart and messed with her spirit. One of the lies was that it mattered where you decided to worship. That, that was one of the main arguments that Jewish and Samaritans had. The Jewish people said you had to worship God in the temple and the Samaritans said that you could worship God in this, on this mountain where God had met folk before. And they argued about that so much that it was like, they talked about each other like neither one of them were children of God. But that bothered her so much that she didn't have any peace in her soul. And she didn't have any peace in her mind because she clearly wanted to worship God right. 
She clearly wanted to connect with God in a way that showed her that there was hope for her, that there was hope for her, that there was hope for her. Because wait a minute, wait a minute, y'all know how Jesus read her? What I mean by Jesus read her when they're having this conversation, um, he tells her about her life experience, right? He, he, he tells her about the fact that she's had five husbands and that she's living with somebody right now who ain't even her husband and a whole bunch of us then just did what the folk would do when she came to the well earlier than noon. We just judged her. We decided she was a sinner. We assumed that she had five husbands because she was living with somebody else's husband. But did you know that there's a strong possibility that she had five husbands because husband number one died and husband number two died and husband number three died and husband number four died and husband number five died. And this is an era where if you are a widow and you ain't got a man to take care of you, you ain't got nothing. And if you are a widow who has been married five times, Folk gonna go, mm. oh, that very her die. Maybe the only way that she could have somebody who could take care of her was to live with him outside of marriage because he wasn't willing to risk marrying her because she had a death touch. I'm just saying, we assume that she was living in sin because she had a choice. We assume that she wasn't just trying to survive. Do you know that there are so many of us who are just trying to survive, just trying to live our lives with hope and joy and peace and we are making choices that other people demonize us for. We are making choices to survive that other people then decide that we can't be a child of God for. You know what? Maybe God needs to come through some of our Samarias too. Maybe God needs to come through some of the lies that we are living with as if they are true. Maybe God needs to come through the lie that says that there are people who are unredeemable when God says, I take my time with you so that everybody who wants to be saved can be saved. Maybe, maybe if God would come through our Samaria, maybe if God would come through all of those traditions and positions that keep us from reaching out to God and inviting God to come clarify in our minds and in our hearts those things that we have been taught that don't make sense to us but we want it to make sense because we want to get close to God maybe church we could have some hope that laughs maybe church we could have some peace that makes a difference if God would just come through look I ain't here to tell you what your Samaria is, but you know what it is. I ain't here to tell you what you need God to come through. I don't know what it is. It could be a diagnosis from the doctor. I don't know what it is. It could be a pink slip from your employer. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, if you invite Jesus to come through, if you invite Jesus to meet you in your Samaria, you will walk away from the experience different than when you came. How do I know? Because watch what happened to this woman. She came hiding. She came ducking and diving and she left saying come see a man who told me everything that I had ever done and showed me that there was hope showed me that there was joy showed me that there was peace I think this dude is the Messiah you need to know him for yourself this is the same woman y'all who avoided folk to maintain her peace. This is the same woman, y'all, who was hiding, but instead walked smack dab into the center of the city and said, you need to meet him. You need to know him for yourself. I know you need hope. I know you need peace because I needed it and he gave it and if he could give it to me, what could he do for you? What if Jesus would come through? If we would let him come through, if we would stop pretending that we had everything about this life of faith right every day, if we would let Jesus come through, 
maybe we could give out some hope and some peace instead of snatching it from the folk. I'm just saying, church, God has got to come through. But I'm not just saying that God has got to come through. I'm telling you that Jesus is coming through. That's the way that God in Jesus Christ works. He shows up when we need him, whether we ask him to show up or not. He shows up in a way that breaks apart all the stuff that prevents us from living with hope and joy and peace and faith. Jesus comes through. Jesus comes through with healing. Jesus comes through with power. Jesus comes through with hope. Jesus comes through with resurrection. Jesus comes through. The room. But are we letting him? Because if Jesus is taking the time to show up in your Samaria and my Samaria, are we taking the time to engage a Jesus who would dare to come to the spaces? and the places that we wouldn't go to if we didn't have to. I'm a double dog dare y'all again, right? Y'all ready? I double dog dare you to let Jesus come through. I double dog dare you to let Jesus have access to the stuff that you can manage on your own. I double dog dare you to let Jesus come through because if you let Jesus come through, I guarantee you that giants will fall. If you let Jesus come through, I guarantee that you will shift from being somebody who avoids anybody and everybody to being somebody who can help but tell anybody and everybody everybody to come see a man who changes everything. Church, if we let God come through, hope and peace will too. This is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God.